going to name this term as p of x and the next term as q of x hello guys i hope you're doing great in this video i'll be telling you how to solve second order differential equations using a method which is called reduction of order this method allows us to find a second solution for which the first solution is already given so for example there was a differential equation any differential equation there was a solution y1 which was available to us it was given to us and we require to find the second solution to this differential equation so this method will allow us to do that so first let's see how to formulate this uh, method so the first thing is that you write the differential equation in the standard format the standard form that we saw earlier was a2 y double prime plus a1 y prime plus a0 y equal to 0 by the way this method is only for homogeneous equations so first of all i'm going to define a new standard form and that standard form is and the new standard form is achieved by dividing all of this equation with a2 which is the coefficient of the leading term so i'm going to divide all of this equation by a2 once i get this equation i'm going to name different terms for example i'm going to name this term as p of x and I'm going to name the next term, this a0 over a2 as q of x. So now I'm going to rewrite this equation as y double prime plus p of x y prime plus q of x y equal to 0. Now this will be known as our standard form for this method. Once we have written this equation in this new standard form and we are given with uh, one solution of this differential equation, we will try to formulate a new solution. And as we have uh, described in the previous video, that the new solution must be independent to the uh, previous solution. So if I were to write that y2 and y1 are related to each other by a constant, you would say that these are not linearly independent. So if this was the relationship between y2 and y1, y2 will not be of any benefit to us because it will just be a scaled version of the old solution. So no, we don't want that. So what could we want? We could wa want a y2 which is related to this y1 which is which is derived from this y1 but it is very different from this y1. Different by this function u of x because when you multiply one function of x with another function of x it is definitely going to become very very different from the old solution which is y1 and this y2 and y1 are going to be now linearly independent so that is the logic behind introducing this u of x here so now we have two solutions y1 is given to us and y2 is u of x multiplied version of y1 and by the way i'm just going to use y instead of y2 because right now we're only interested in y so the new solution is simply y which is u times y1. So let me write again u equal y equals u times y1. Now I'm interested to find the value of this y. But in order to do that, I will have to substitute the value of this y into this the given differential equation. And in order to do that, I will be needing the value. I already have the value of y, so I can substitute it over here. But I don't have the values of y prime and y double prime. So I will have to construct these values from this y. How do, I, how do I do that? I simply take the derivative of this y, this whole equation. But since the right hand side has two things being multiplied together, both of these things are functions of x. So product rule will have to be applied. So I'm going to apply the product rule here. u y1 prime plus u prime y1. This is the product rule applied. But we also need y double prime. So what do we do? We take the derivative of this thing again so I, we get y double prime but there will be two product rules applied to both of these terms u prime y1 prime plus u y1 double prime plus u prime y1 prime plus u double prime y1 right this is uh, these are the three things that we required so i'm going to substitute all of these three uh, uh, you know functions here here and here so let's do that first we have to write y double prime so u prime y1 prime u y1 double prime 
u prime y1 prime plus u double prime y1 this is y double prime right then add this by multiplying p of x and instead of p of x i am going to simply write p uh, multiplied to all of this thing right p multiplied to y prime so p u y1 prime plus p u prime y1 and this and then q multiply with y all of this right so i get plus q u y1 equal to 0 now i am going to select all the terms with uh, coefficient u u prime and u double prime so collecting all the terms with u this is the term this is the term and this is the term so i get y1 double prime plus p y1 prime plus q y1 right similarly collecting all the terms with u double prime so uh, this is a term and this is uh, the only term right so i get u double prime y1 and then i collect all the terms with u prime and the answer to that will be 2y1 prime because we have uh, 2y1 prime u prime so i have a y1 prime u prime here and i have a y1 prime u prime here so these are going to be added as 2 y1 u1 prime i am selecting u prime so this becomes plus p times y1 equal to 0 all of this thing if assume if we have uh, assumed correctly before that y1 is a valid solution of this differential equation which is already given to us if we sub substitute y1 instead of y and here and here as well all of the left hand side will become equal to zero right to the right hand side so this is what we see here this is just the same equation with instead of y the solution y1 so all of this is going to result as zero so all of this will become zero because it is a valid solution y1 is a valid solution so we are left with only these parts and in these parts what we can do is we can either say that here you can see that uh, there is two only two terms in uh, for u u double prime and u prime so what do i do i assume something i assume that u prime is w i, I simply rename u prime and i uh, if i differentiate this equation i get w prime equal to u double prime so write all of this thing in terms of w what do we get we get w prime y1 plus w into 2y1 prime plus py1 equal to 0 so th this is where the magic has happened that this is a new differential equation the order of this differential equation is 1 whereas in the previous differential equations the order was 2 and we were uh, not able to solve these differential equations because they have they had higher order but now we have reduced the order of a second order differential equation to first order this is what uh, we have been able to do and that's why this uh, method is called reduction of orders we have reduced the order of this second order differential equation to first order and we already have all the capability to solve a first order differential equation okay so what we do at this point is we change all the things to the proper definition of the prime functions w to because all of these differentials are with respect to x and all these functions are functions of x so i will be able to write like this and again just we did in the previous uh, one of the previous videos that we are going to treat dx and dy's or dw's just like variables and uh, apply algebraic rules on, rules on them so i'm going to keep dw over here and bring this w over here how can i do that i can divide all the equation by w right so similarly i'm going to divide all the equation with y1 as well so it is uh, going to be vanished from here and it is going to appear uh, in these denominators right so i'm going to write 2 dy1 uh, and by the way i'm also going to multiply all the equation with dx so 
so i'm going to actually write all this in shorthand so i'm going to um multiply all this equation with dx and divide all the equation with y1 and divide all the equation with uh, w right so what do we get we get something like this so 2dy1 dx goes away w goes away but there a y1 appears because uh, in the denominator because we have divided all the equation with y1 and there was no y1 in this term similarly in this equation y1 goes away but in a dx which appears here we get p dx right now in this uh, format everything is in its own place for example all this term is a function of w all this term is a function of y1 all this term is a function of uh, constant or x so i can take the integral now so the integral will result as natural log of w plus 2 natural log of y1 plus because this p is a function of x we cannot calculate this integral and we have to keep it in the same formats integral p of x dx because p is a function of x we cannot do anything to it so uh, there should be a constant of integration as well so then i we i write uh, so i can combine these two terms how i could write first i could take this 2 to the power of y1 it would become natural log of w plus natural log of y1 square and i should take the integral term to the other side c minus integral p of x dx right then i should combine these two terms how when logs are being added the in, uh, internal terms get multiplied right so c minus integral p of x dx and then i could make all of this equation a power of e so on the left hand side i get w y1 square right and on the right hand side i get e to the power c minus integral p of x dx so i can break this thing into two parts and i could write c and into e to the power minus integral p dx right so this is our final solution and uh, just to complete it a bit i will need to first change this w into u and as you remember that we had assumed that uh, w is equal to u prime so i'm going to use that over there and i get uh, u prime y1 square equal to c integral e integral minus p dx then i will take this y1 square to the other side and i get u prime equal to c e minus integral p dx divided by y1 square and then i would write u prime as du over dx and once i do that i will be able to uh, take this dx to the other side and take integral on both sides so let me do it right over here so i take this dx bring it to this side i take integral on both sides and the left hand side immediately becomes u right so i get u equal to all of this and that was the objective to find uh, in order to find y which was the second solution which was u y1 so i'm going to write all the value of u which is c integral and by the way in this equation i can omit the value of no so now because in the previous step i have again taken an integral i should introduce i should rename the previous constant and i should write down a new constant of integration right so i get c1 e to the power minus integral p dx divided by y1 squared dx into y1 uh, plus c2 all of this multiplied with y1 and by assuming that c1 is z 1 and c2 is 0 we can get to a particular solution which is y equal to y1 integral e minus integral p dx divided by y1 square dx so this is what you can call a formula for finding a new solution from an old solution
Uh, I hope you understood the concept and I hope you liked the video. Please subscribe to stay in touch and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.